Everyone say, if I want to be a blessing to my world, I have to first be a blessing to myself. See, that's what you find when you begin to understand that you are constantly moving forward in life if you allow yourself to center yourself in the basic idea of our teaching in religious science, science of mind. If you were fortunate enough to turn on the radio this morning and hear Brent Waters, did you hear him on KGO this morning? You heard him. Was he outstanding or what? Uh, I do recommend this program. He comes on, uh, I think, 6 o'clock uh, Sunday morning uh, till 9, but you can catch always, always part of it and it is well worth your time. It's called God Talk and it is uh, phenomenal. He, uh, this morning, was exploring uh, Socrates, Aristotle, and Plato, and how the uh, legend of Jesus and Socrates combined, and how similar they were, and how much they combined with each other, pointing out that neither one of them ever wrote anything. It was what was said about them that influenced the Western world. Uh, and one of the things he pointed out, and he had a wonderful uh, guest on this morning who, was, who has written a book called Science and Religion. Hey, 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 talk about that one. Now, what he was pointing out is that you have a whole group, you have two groups of people in the Western world, or in the world itself, and you have one who says yes to everything they know. And that's all they know how to do is just say yes to everything they know. And then you have us. <laughs> and where we come from is where uh, the people who allow themselves to say no to everything we know and allow ourselves to know that no matter how much we know there's that much more to know. That we are constantly in the growing. Everybody say the more I know, the more I know there's more to know. I think people who find religious science are people who are refusing to have their thinking done for them or to create a religion based in superstition, in myth, in all of the stuff that people come up with, we are told to stop practicing idolatry and start living from truth because as Jesus pointed out in his wonderful understanding that what we're looking for, we're looking with. He said, where should we look? Point to it. Mm, here. Okay. Now, there's. A, I found this wonderful poem that I want to share with you. It's from a uh, 1974 Science of Mind magazine. Uh, and it, uh, the song we opened with this morning is really, uh, 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 this is another correlation of the same idea. Listen to this wonderful poem and let's use it as a foundation for our lesson this morning. The title of it is I Am a Millionaire. I've got my name on the river. I've got my name on the sea. I've got my name on the summer skies, they all belong to me. I've got my name on the violets that grow in their corner fair, and wherever nature has planted peace, my name is written there. As far as my eye can travel, from where I stand to the sun, I've got my name on all the things I see, and I own them, every one. I've got my name on the singing birds that mate when the spring is new. But I won't be selfish with all these things. I'll share them, friend, with you. There is no deed to the river. There is no lock to the sea. Not all the power in all the world can take their joy from me. There is no fence to heaven. No vault to hold sunset's gold. And the earth is mine and the heavens are mine till the suns all grow cold. And though I may be a pauper and stand in my rags apart, I'm richer than all the kings there are if peace is in my heart. The stars are my thousand jewels. And life is my bread and wine, and all, I, all that I see was made for me. And all that I love is mine. How many know that all that you love is yours? How many know that it starts where you are? Because love is not someplace else, it's right where you are. It's looking out of your eyes at me and my eyes at you. And we can go from 
where we are, the uh, point of being, which we can say, okay, this is what I know and this is what I'm demonstrating based on what I know. But we can also empty our cup and know that we can move from ineffective being to effective becoming. That our effective becoming is always waiting on our next idea because it unfolds from us to the world. Religious science is wonderful because it allows us to do what? It allows us to explore the truth of ourself and free ourselves into saying no to what we think we know and yes to what? To a greater idea of self and then say yes to discovering how to live with the greater idea if we move it from an intellectual exercise to an application. Everyone say spiritualizing your intellect. So you don't just be settled with intellect. Don't just be settled with knowing about it. Don't be settled with, you know, I've read all these books about all these people who know it. One of the greatest things that Dr. Holmes ever said was in Voice Celestial when he says, and he's really talking about himself and his own investigation into greater reality. He said, it's not enough that all these great, good, and wise people knew what they knew. What I need to know is what I myself can know. If there's a law, then that law backs up every belief system. No matter what the belief system is, if you believe the belief uh, it then begins to operate on whatever you're doing and then it unfolds as whatever you think it's going to do and then what happens is you look at the doing and think that's doing it and not understanding it is the belief that it's doing it that's doing it. You have to get the CD to find out what I just said. <laughs> I'll go back and hear this this week sometime and go, oh, that was really good. Okay. Now, there's always a lot of ways of looking at everything. Penny sent me a wonderful... <laughs> She's talking about King Arthur. How many King Arthur fans around here? Okay. And his favorite knight at the round table. Sir Cumference. <laughs> I was kind of afraid to share that with you. I thought I might have to duck when I... <laughs> now, I'm going to ask you this morning. Think about it. <clears throat> Are you letting yourself live your life at the level of design or default? <laughs> and if you're living by the level of design, is your design coming from a higher ideal? And are you letting that ideal become your ideas? You see, your ideal is unlimited. Your self-definition is unlimited. With all that getting at the understanding of the truth of yourself. It was Christopher Morley who said, There is only one success to be able to spend your life in your own way. In your own way. Now, for 35 years, I've been standing in this lectern behind here sharing this idea, and every time I do it, somebody wakes up to a new concept of self.